Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be making a video basically explaining how to structure your API or your backend using Node and Express whilst uh, following the pattern, uh, the design pattern called MVC. So for those who don't know, MVC is a, is a pattern for which you structure your project in which you basically divide it into three different parts. One which is the models, one which is the views and one which is the controllers. And as you can see, we are, I'm going to make, I'm going to des uh, describe this pattern by basically just creating a normal API. So it won't include the views part of it, because mostly when you're working with this views will be represented as a front end or a client side. However, uh, since we're just making an API, so we're structuring a backend, which is what usually occurs when you're working with an MVC pattern then it usually won't include views, but it will definitely include models and controllers. So as you can see right here, we have a simple project. It, it's just an, an express server, which um, it's listened on the route 3005 and nothing happens when I reach 3005, it's running and everything is cool. But you can see here on the side that we actually created uh, three different folders that didn't exist when we created this project. One of them is the routes folder, the other one is the models folder, and the other one is the controllers folder. Well, the routes folder is pretty self-explanatory. Routes is basically a folder where you include all of your different routes. So for example, if I'm creating a project which has a user, so you would create a route called user, and inside of there, you would define all of the different stuff that you can do with a user. You can create a user, you can delete a user, you can update a user, you can do whatever you want with a user and everything you want to do with it, you insert it inside of that file. So the models folder in, in contrast is basically where you define the structure of your schemas. Uh, th th this explanation more simply is basically where you define your database. So if you're using with if you're using an SQL database or if you're using a NoSQL, NoSQL like MongoDB, it doesn't really matter. You will define it over here in models. Basically, I would recommend most projects use an ORM and an ORM. I had several videos talking about it. Uh, if you're using SQL, you can use SQLize. If you're using MongoDB, you can use Mongoose. But basically, it's, a, it's just a way to organize your queries in a way so that you're using normal JavaScript and treating them as objects. So basically, here is where you would define uh, those models and you would define those uh, the database tables and everything instead of models. And then controllers is best is basically where you execute all of the different things you want to do with the data. And it's basically where you construct, you manage the data. So you make the request to whatever database you create on the models, and you treat that data through the controllers. This might not make so much sense right now. But as I keep working on a project, you guys will see basically the idea of it. So let's create a simple route. And let's come here. Let's pretend like we're creating a project where we need to work with a user. So in the routes folder, let's create a user.js. And over here, we can just uh, call an express variable and require express. And normally, when you create a route, you can just come here and say uh, router equals to express dot router. Okay, created an instance of a router. And now we can use this router to make requests. Like for example, if we wanted to make a post request, we could just do this. But as usual, this is what I want to make what I want to emphasize. Basically, if you want to make a post request to create a user, you would usually write it like this router dot post, then you would create a slash, I don't know, actually just just create a slash because we're going to come here to our index.js. And let's initiate the route. So const um, user route equals to require, then let's try to access the the routes folder. So slash user. Now we have we collected that we have in our in our variable the user route. And then we can just write app dot use a user route. And we can add the user route. Basically, this is just saying if you don't know what how to use routes, basically, this is saying that whatever is written over here is basically going to be accessible through this localhost 2005 slash user. So if we just say app router dot post slash, we're basically making a post request to the localhost 2005 slash user. So that should be fine. And then usually we would write rack and res 
to make a request and a response. And inside of here, we would do something like res.send. Uh, you just created a user, something like this. Let's test this to see if it's working. So for example, wait, what happened? Uh, my app crashed a uh, router uh, is a middleware, f middleware function. What happened? Um, okay. Oh, I guess I know what it what happens. So if we go here to the index.js, I guess this is the problem. We have to actually pass this first and then we pass the router. So when we save this, you can see now that the error continues. So I'm going to take a look at what happened and I'll come back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I definitely now get what I did wrong. Basically, we can't forget that at the end of any routes, we need to write module.exports equals to router. And now we're actually exporting the, the router that we're using here. So when I save it, you can see everything should be working. And actually, you know what, let's not make a guest re get re a post request, let's actually make a get request. And we should return a user. Uh, let's pretend like it's returning a user named user uh, named Pedro Machado, which is my name. Okay, so basically, when we try to reach the slash user, you can see that it displays user Pedro Machado. But this isn't following MVC. The reason why it it isn't following is because we're working through we're making the the HTTP request over here, we're making the the, the, the get request, and we're working with whatever data we have inside of here. So basically, what we would do is we would make the query uh, inside of the models and would re receive the data from our database if we wanted to receive a user. And over here, we would actually make a request to our controllers. And this right here would be all logic that exists inside of the controllers. So let's create a controller. So you guys understand, I would come here and write user controller .js over here. And the user controller would actually be very intuitive. Inside of here, it would be basically a module dot exports. And we would export an object. And basically, this object would contain all the different posts and the different HTTP requests that we would make with regards to the user. So for example, if we wanted to make a function that would relate to a get request, we could write get then rec, uh, rec res and pass a function and inside of here, let's paste the res dot send. So this is where we define whenever we want to make a user a get request in relation to the user, we would basically define it over here. Currently, we only have the get but let's use this over here in our favor. Well, since we just created the user controller, we have to import the user controller. So let's first come here and write const controller equals to require uh, two dots slash controllers slash user controller. And now instead of just writing res.send, instead of actually writing any function after the get request, we could simply pass that logic to the controller and come here and say controller dot get. And now this knows that whenever we try to reach a get request for the user, it will try to go to the controller and it would see what a get request means. This is basically a way to structure. Remember that it doesn't make any difference. The only difference is that you're following a very well known and very uh, organized design pattern where you can just make this make the project look a lot nicer and a lot easier to uh, debug if you're trying to work with it because you know that all the logic is separated into controllers and all the queries are separated into the models and all the requests are separated into the routes. And if you ha also have views in your project, you would also know that your views are in a views folder. So this is basically the video. I you can I hope you guys got the the gist of it. Basically, you you would create, for example, a router dot post here, and you would add the logic for the post on the user controller. If you wanted to make a put, you would do the same thing. Basically, I didn't want to make this video very long. This is basic the basic idea of working with an MVC pattern on an Express and Node.js project. So if you have any doubts, please leave a comment down below. I would be very happy to answer. I'm posting every single day, so if you would. Like if you could, please subscribe and leave a like down below because I would really appreciate it. I'm also selling some merch. So if you would like to, to buy something, it's like related to programming, coding. The, it's basically the, the link is down below. It's, I think they're really cool. But also, if you want to see more videos, please leave a comment down below saying which videos you want to see. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.